Hello, everyone. Thank you for going into our group to have a listen to our ins instruction of our project. And now I'm going to start my introduction. Our project is about PIR code, which is the abbreviations of the private information retrieval protocols. And its purpose is to protect our information from being reviewed when we are ser serving the internet and download something important and private. Now, I'm going to tell you about how this protocol works and how it magically reach the purpose of protecting. Here is some variants of this project. In the PIR code, there are K servers and the database X. Uh, and we suppose that the X is the, in the binary form. Then we uniformly divide X into M parts, which is part one, part two, to part M. And each of them in, concludes N divide M bytes. And now we distribute the M parts into K servers from a sub specific function. Then let's see the simplest example of the PIR code, which is two, three servers case. Assume that we are going to retrieve the I spice from the database X and X I belongs to the part one. We have uniformly divide X into two parts. And then we respectively put the part one and part two and part one plus part two into three servers. Each of them has undivided two part, uh, the undivided two bytes. And now, uh, the users create EI and a random code, uh, a random code A, which also, uh, which also has two uh, undivided two uh, bytes. Finally, we use the linear formula, which was written in red, uh, as follow in this part uh, to get what we want. And then the 4.8 server case is as follow. It may be a little more complex and, than the 2.3 server one. And this, in this time, we divide X into four parts and we assign them in A servers in a specific, uh, in a special way. The method is in this picture and you can observe it. Uh, and then we also make the, uh, an A, which is also a random, which is also a random code in this part. Uh, in this way, we also add three of them together and finally get what we want. Uh, and in the end, uh, we also use the special formula to add them together. Maybe you are a little confused about it now, but make it easy. Just remember that the server just know the random code A and the whole database, but they are actually impossible to know your code information. The second way to construct PIR protocol is cubic construction. At first, we are going to define two variables, S and M. Then, divided the database X into different parts, shown in the picture. Then, we will have P blah blah equals to the sum of different acts. We should pay attention that there is a gap 
from i psi minus one to i psi plus one. And i psi means the change element of x i one, i two, blah, blah, i psi, blah, 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 i k minus one. The meaning of p, blah, blah, is the sum of different points in the same line in the same dimension. Maybe this is a little hard to understand, but you can see the following pictures. This may help you to understand what I'm, what I'm talking. Then let us see an easy example. In this example, k equals to three, then we have p. The purpose of us is retrieve the piece part in x, i, g. We will do the same thing that talked before. We are going to generate two random binary sequence, the same length as x, i, g, names q1 and q2, and q3 equals to q1 plus q2 plus ep. And ep is a vector whose whose piece part, piece position of EP is one, and the other position are all zeros. Then we distributed Q1, Q2, to Q3 to different parts that's shown in the picture. And we will do some simple calculation, and we can have the piece piece position in x, i, g. Then let us see a hard example. Like the previous one, we will have three kinds of p because in this example, the k equals to four. Then we should generate random binary sequence q1, q2, q3, q4, and ep, and distribute, distributed them to different parts shown in the picture. And q4 equals to q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus ep. And then through this simple calculation which shown in the picture, we can have the piece part of x, i, g, k. Thirdly, let's look at a PR protocol based on Stainer system. Here is a lemma. It is from week seven, homework question three. It is mainly about in a two dimension coordinate system, how to draw lines between each two points. To prove this lemma, in FQ field, we can draw lines that are y equals to kx plus b and x equals to c. Then there are q squared plus q lines in total, and each line satisfies the request, and each point is on q plus one lines. Then we are going to construct the code. We consider a situation that there are n servers for us to store data, and we are going to divide the database D into D square parts. There are D11, D12, D13, and 2DQQ. And each part are corresponding to a point on the coordinate system. Then we can draw Q square plus Q lines, and each two points are on the same line. Then we, we are going to store the data in the server. The first construction of the storage is that S1 alpha plus alpha q plus beta store the database of d alpha beta and the server s2 gamma store the addition of all the database from l gamma and here and below the sum of database means that in fq add each digit of the database and the time of database means time each digit and then to retrieve the data we are going to 
use Q plus one query series Q one Q two to Q Q plus one, and then we set Q zero is the sum plus E i, and E i is construct like this. So we can know that in the F two, the this. This addition is E i. Then we send Q zero to a server, S alpha one plus alpha Q plus beta. And that is the server that stores the database of D alpha beta. And then we are going to store the other queries to the server S2 gamma such at point alpha beta is from AO gamma. And as well as the server S1 AQ plus B such at point AB is from AO gamma. That means we are going to send a query to the to a line and each digit on the line except for the alpha beta point and then we can know that a x equal is equals to q zero dot s one alpha q plus beta plus this sigma and then to simplify it, we can finally know that it is uh, the highest digit in the part D alpha Q beta, and then that's solved. The code form of the specified cases. For example, we are going to enter a 16-bit database like this, and then we are going to divide the 16 digits into four parts. Each part have two, four digits. Then, for example, we are going to retrieve the second part and the third bit. And we, firstly, we are going to show the 2-3 protocol. That is, we send the random code of four digits, for example, one zero one one, and then Q one equals to one zero one one, and Q two equals to one zero zero one, which is Q one plus E. And then we are going to send the Q one to the server C one, and Q two to the server C two, Q one to the server C five, and then. We can know that we we will retrieve the number one, and for the four eight situation, we are going to construct Q one and Q two. For example, it's one zero zero zero, and Q two is one one zero one, and then the Q one is one zero zero zero, Q two is one one zero one, and Q three is one zero zero. 0, 1, 1, 1. That is Q1 plus Q2 plus E. And we send the query to the corresponding server. We can finally know that we can retrieve the number 1. That's all. Conclusion. During this term, we have spent a lot of time on our project. There are still some interesting ways to construct PIR protocol. During our exploration on our project, we are deeply attracted by PIR protocol and feel miraculous about this magic way to protect our privacy from revealing and endeavor that the scholars made to simplify the communication complexity and the storage overhead to make the system better. This project has inspired our motivation to explore the world of math we really enjoy the time when we work on it. That's all. Thank you.